uh, special applications are what used to be called green features. Um, and uh, this is a follow-on to a good to know session that we did at the International Group last year, uh, where we talked about things that are in your system that are there and most people don't know about them. So we've done that session several times, and this is kind of an anarchy because a lot of people didn't know about special application features. Um, anybody here ever heard of green features before? Mm -hmm. Okay, first you've heard of them before, right? Um, time permitting, it depends on questions and things, but uh, we're going to also talk about some best practices for the world workers. Unless you guys are ready to hear about that first. <laughs> so we're going to go through this real quick. So what is a special application of what used to be called a green feature? Um, the system only does so much. 700 things and 700 features, about 30% of those about 30% of those 700 are maintenance features, diagnostics, and things like that. But that's still a lot of features, of which I could probably tell you right now 10 of them, if I had name them. <coughs> Even with all that, there are a lot of things that co companies had that they needed to have done it, and the system didn't do it. We, we find that happening a lot regionally, for instance. The Pacific Rim is a big driver in some of these things as well, like the key button and things like that. So what if the system, you've got this investment in Nevada, and the system doesn't do what you want it to do? What do you do? So you could put in a request, which is called the GRIP, Global Recording Integration Process. You go through a partner, a business partner, and you put that request in. And this really starts the process going, I call it GRIP. Yeah, right? I mean, it, it's, it, you know, it's, boy, this doesn't do that thing I want it to do. So what is that process? Process is you go and put a grip request. And it's about a seven, about a seven week process, or five, it's about a five week process that it takes. Um, it's vetted all along the way. It's vetted by people that are experts, uh, geographically dispersed, just experts on the various, on what you're looking to do. If it's conferencing, it has something to do with crisis alert, we'll see that in a minute. Uh, various, various teams get together, these virtual teams, VT, and they review it. And at the end of the 35 days, sometimes sooner, it, it may be approved. Um, if it isn't approved, there is a, a process for uh, asking to go back again and, uh, and, and re, reinvestigate that once again. So, but at the, at the end of that time, um, it becomes a feature. Now the thing is that when this was, was called the green feature, you had to pay for those. And you could pay several thousand dollars. Because what happened was somebody needed it, a buyer went ahead and produced it at a certain amount of expense. So they, they weren't going to give that away. So a green feature, and I think it's because we wonder why it's called green, probably because of the money. I don't know why they would call it that. But I mean, you had to spend a lot of money for these features. Bust a couple of links here. And anyway, a slide presentation will be up on our website um, if you want to uh, go grab a copy of it there. So here's what happened. It costs a lot of money, right? But beginning with CM5.2.1, not the case anymore. Um, I'm going to show you uh, in a moment what the screen looks like. You go into your system, you type in change, or even display, just want to look at them, uh, the special applications, and up will come a nine page, uh, nine pages of features. And what you do to turn them on is you change it to yes. Kind of cool, because you, you got to pay for it. Now you don't know, it's, it's free. Every one of them is free. Of course, it's a caveat here, but I'll get to that in a moment. So here I can click the display. Now let's build this whole thing up. So here's what happens. One of the things you'll notice, here's the screen. And it may be hard to see, but all these nodes, you decide what you want. But that thing, the reason I get really big on top is that note. I'll read it to you folks, for the folks that maybe can't see it back. Um, it's a warning. Special app features are intended to serve specific needs and are not recommended for general use. Activating one or more of these features may result in unpredictable system behavior. Uh, we're used to that anyway. Unpredictable system behavior. Um, please review information at the support site before feature activation. And um, so what they're saying is it can be unpredictable. Now some of these features are very simple. I'll show you those. Uh, where we don't have to worry. But there could be some interactions. In those cases, you will not be able to change it to a yes. You're going to have to get some permission because the buyer wants to make sure there's not a conflict. It causes something really weird to happen. So are these not supportable features then? These are all supported. Yep. But they sometimes have to go through a buyout if they if they recognize it may cause an issue. But every one of these supported, they're good to go. Actually, what will happen, I'm glad you asked that, 
I change it to, I change any one of these to a yes, and I upgrade my system. It follows right along with it. So it becomes a feature on your system. When you upgrade my system, I still have it. Um, I just want to give you an idea of the breadth of these um, as well. But it's kind of nice to know, right? That's, that's why we like to talk to people, again, from last year, again today, what you can do with what you have. There's a lot of great partners here talking about things you can buy, and good stuff. But we also like to talk about what you can do without having to spend any money at all. So let's look at some of these features. One of my favorites, I get life. It's a fan, actually a favorite feature. But, um, it's crisis alert station by location out, like Paul or Lori, if you've got multiple, let's say, locations. I've got several sites. So there's a great feature called crisis alert. Anybody not, well, pretty much familiar with it? You just shake your heads? Okay. So crisis alert, for those that don't know, um, <coughs> 911, it used to be 10 stations that I could signal. Really annoying. I never knew a phone could make that sound. I don't know what it was built in there, but flashing of lights, it's crazy. But it'll show you if somebody dialed 911. And it'll show you who dialed 911. It's nice, particularly if you have a company where you have maybe uh, some kind of first responder, some kind of CPR class, or maybe even a, a security uh, group. We'll alert those people, right? And always, I always recommend the front desk. Because when the first responder comes in, uh, that person will be able to direct the first responder to the right place. So it's a nice feature. But what if you have multiple locations? So I'm at the uh, location in um, New York, and I also have offices in Chicago and Los Angeles. They're all tied together, flattened and consolidated. I dial 911. Do I really want every phone all across the country to start? Actually, I wouldn't like that. It'd be kind of fun. But I mean, you know, <laughs> that's me. But, um, but you don't want that. You want the guy in New York that's just ringing the phones in New York that's supposed to ring. Well, now with the special application feature, and I'm so glad they came up with this. And Larry, we've talked about this. I mean, it's crazy to think you can hit it in every phone in the place where it is. So here, it's right here. Hard to see, I guess, with the screen, but make it a yes. Now, there's some things, and again, I'm not going to start reading slides. Nobody wants that, but um, there are some restrictions, like with H323 phones, which will work, but um, it'll depend on how they're set up. They may actually revert to the CLAN board that it's registered to, unless you actually tell it to, to do otherwise. Okay. Um, another part, last part of, the, of this particular section, but um, we can now go to 750. You can really ring every phone off the hook if you wanted to. It started out with 10, and so they went to 750. Okay, cool. Uh, by the way, can I just, do you folks see a reason to have this? Has anybody, has anybody implemented it in their organization today? You've implemented it? Right, right. Okay. But it's a nice feature, and you know we get into things all the time about uh, a big topic I've noticed in the last few years is 911, E911, that sort of thing. And so it is a big topic. People are, are interested in that. But let's maybe take it to the next steps. It doesn't cost you anything. And let's alert those people locally. I mean, they're, as, quick, as quickly as somebody can get there, that's fine. You know, like a first responder. If you've got somebody on site that can be of assistance, and get particularly at the front desk, why not use it? And now with the green feature, just alert those people that you need to alert. OK, another one. Uh, per station user got hold. I can create all these different music sources. And I can then just say by station which music source to be playing. Kind of nice. Now I'm going to show you something in a second. Um, actually, let me show this to you right now. Is anybody, if you've ever been to um, support.abide.com, You've been there? So go there if you want. That was um, SA888. That was that particular feature. And it doesn't really tell you much on one screen. But if, I, if you go to um, support.avaya.com, right here, I'm going to do search. I'm going to put SA888. I want to kind of just digress for a second and show this to you. And let's find. Here. Now I pull that up, it'll give me a really nice synopsis of what it does. I mean, better than that one little line you see on this, one of, page one of nine, right? And then what I can do if I want to, this is for all the, all the special apps. This will give me just about everything you could ever want to know. 
So that's kind of good to know, right? I mean, because uh, you know there's an essay out there, but you know, in, in particularly those caveats, we talked about getting some interactions. You really want to know if there's any caveats before you go ahead and do this. So I kind of wanted to show that to you folks. Okay. okay. We're going to go through a few more of these. Now, this is interesting. Expanded holiday table. Um, a lot of people use this. And they set them up at the beginning of the year. They'll set up these tables, and they just are good for the rest of the year. They don't have to worry about it. Um, somebody, somewhere, I don't know why, but somebody wanted to really increase um, the number on here. I mean, here's my note on that, which is I would love to work for this company. I mean, look how many, look how many holidays these guys get. Um, there's not that many days in the year. So I think they come in once a year. One day. But somebody wanted it. It kind of makes you wonder what, what prompted that. You know, I, I, I didn't do it, but I was going to put a list on here of the weird, really weird ones and say, can you guys figure out what they were thinking? But I didn't do it. I should have done it. Next year. So we actually use our, we use a holiday table for um, when we have system maintenance, when we need to bypass the voice portal. So that could be the reason, because we end up overwriting our holiday table. OK, cool. Could you so, see using anything expanding to that level? To, to keep track of when we bypass the oh, portal. Oh, OK. So maybe it's not that great of a company. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but so you use that. So could you, would this help you? Is it good to know that this yeah. is out there? Oh, cool. Yeah. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want somebody to get something out of it. You guys can talk about yourself. Just hit this button then. <laughs> um, that's great. Thank you for the feedback. Increase intercom groups. Uh, so, um, and that's pretty good. Uh, intercom, intercom group, I believe, is up two pages of 16. It's 32 entries. Um, now I can go um, maximum of 1024 on the, really, think of the HPDL, you know, 360 or the PG8 now, uh, or on the smaller series, it was 128. So, you know, a big increase, giant increase on those intercom groups. It didn't increase the number of administrable stations within the groups, just more groups. And this is all about me kind of going through, just showing you what's out there, you know, strengths of cord and some of you have I like this a lot. Um, no hold consult. Now last year at the IAUG, we also did some WAUG and the Chicago group last year, we talked about the fact that there's no hold conference, which I love. Do you know what that is? I'm just gonna, it's not, I don't have a slide for it. You've got it in the system already. But no hold conference, there's something to add on to that. An old conference is that um, I call Mary, we're talking, and uh, I want to bring Lynn on the call. But I don't want to stop my conversation. I can hit some buttons, and next thing you know, Lynn's on the call. I can stop, I can wait for the thing. No consult is, is, very, is very similar to, we're having a conversation, there's a new button that gets, you press NH-consult button on your phone. What they will allow you to do is, while you're talking to somebody, you can hit the button and they can consult. And here's the cool part about it. Um, once I read the bottom, once the other party answers, it's merged onto the existing call, thus creating a three-way conference. But this is the cool part. The consult originator will have a two-way talk path to all users. I originated the call. I can talk to everybody on the call. Um, but um, the other party can only talk to me. That's consulting me. They're hearing the call, they're consulting with me. That was kind of nice, right? I bridge on the other party. The other part, nobody knows I did that. They can hear the call, and they can give me some direction. So it's a form of consultation. And you're not putting anybody on hold, you're not talking about any weight, that kind of thing. Blast conference, another one. Um, this is interesting too, because um, I can create a code, and when I dial it, it'll conference in up to eight people. It could be in-house in numbers, I don't know, I don't, not really call out-house numbers, I guess, what would you call them? Uh, <laughs> external numbers, out-house doesn't sound right. Uh, and it'll, it'll bring them together on a call. Now, the interesting thing here is, you know, communication manager doesn't want to do a party conference. The communication manager wants to do six party conferences. You know, we all have that, the maybe conference built in, right? So this is a little bit out of its comfort zone, but this special application said, it actually did, and if you read the documentation, it tells you how it does it, but that's kind of how the sausage is made, you know, how it does it. But it has to go through some iterations to actually bring on those additional two parties. But kind of nice. A blast conference, I need to get these people on the phone, maybe they're in production, maybe they're transportation, it doesn't matter. I want to get them, it, it calls them all and it conferences them together. Is it in house numbers only? No, or you can have in house. So, however, you yeah. program. Yeah. So, it goes beyond the six one on media? Yeah, it does. 
Now, here's the interesting call. It will use the six party um, as long as you're within that confines of six. Uh, once you go to eight, it actually has to do some other things. They get leverages like um, some vectoring or some VDN, some weird things behind the scenes that it does. But as long as you're under the six, it uses just standard traditional six party maybe conferencing. So if you think of like from that that perspective, that's really what's doing. But you can go to eight, which is kind of neat. Um, I can I can that I can see use for this. Can you guys see use? I mean, I really do want to bring a certain team on board, let's say, right? Because an issue has come up. I need to talk to a certain group of people about something. Just hit dial the code and it'll go. Um, expanded on a uh, public unknown numbering table, uh, used quite a bit to manipulate the digits that are sent out. Uh, so that's been increased, and I kind of bolded it. Um, I can now have um, 20,000 uh, entries in the table this time on the bigger system. That's a lot. Uh, another one, if you have vectoring, I think most people have VNs and vector steps and things like that, right? Uh, well, how do you deal with, you have a code that you want to be a dial, it's got star or pound in it. I'm doing a collect digit step, right, on that, on that uh, the PDN hits the vector and it's collecting digits. Um, you couldn't, because it meant something. Pound meant I'm done, and star meant something altogether different. So now you can, if your code, if the code that needs to be dialed, when somebody calls that into that uh, split, you can now include the star and the pound to mean what you want it to mean, not what the system normally would think it means. Because of course you want to hit that pound sign and, and uh, all of a sudden end the call. So now that's, that's not allowed. So it's a perfect name. Collect literally is what it's called. And that would be in your, you have to use that terminology in the vector stuff to, to collect it literally. Uh, like this one too. Um, I, I'm not going through all nine pages, by the way. I only picked out certain ones. But um, service observe. Now, um, what I'm doing here is it could, be a, it could be a breach appearance. So I don't even care about a, a service observing that extension number. I want to service observe that particular phone. You do that as well. Now, okay, I'm not going to give the bear. So everybody's got a bear that wanted a bear. If you really want one, you can have it. That's what bear means. Um, one of these is fake. Anybody want to just hazard a guess which one is fake? Number three? Somebody say number three? No? Anyone? The reason I did this, by the way, was that it's really interesting what people ask for and what gets built. And sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between, between what's real. Number one is the fake one. Doesn't exist. But these are, these are actual ones. Authorization by core. And one that's actually people really, I understand why people want this one, the variable length account codes. I don't I never want to be just packaged in. I have to use a certain set number of digits, right? Now I have very much length on that. <clears throat> okay, so what a hotline is, um, we used to call it like an automatic breakdown, and we used to use uh, analog sets for this all the time. Hey, Tom. Hey, Gary. Sorry, late. Yeah, right. Now we have to start over. Because it is Okay, Turkish. No. Uh, so, um, it's a hotline phone, right? This comes in handy, now I can use an IP phone. In the old days when you phone, now we maybe you know dial. It's an alternative dial, right? But I pick it up and I automatically ring someplace. Kind of cool. Now, does anybody here have a uh, PMS? Anybody? <laughs> no. Property management system. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, no hotel people apparently. <coughs> okay, sorry. A property management system. Um, there's three of them in here. See, this, I'm not making it up. Right there. Um, so, uh, but it's cool because people in the in that hotel motel industry, they've got their own special applications that are required, right? If anybody here did that, um, you can, uh, you got some in there as well. Kind of cool. Or a hospital. Maybe paging, forget. I don't know why I put this in here. Anybody with pagers walking around? I'm real pagers. <laughs> now, my personal favorite, uh, it's not last one, it's my personal favorite. Uh, this hangs up on people. So it's kind of cool that there's actually somebody 
I don't know what country this came from. I don't know. Somewhere in the world, they thought they wanted to hang up on people. Um, if, if I put my send all calls on, and I don't have a coverage path, you'll hear a busy tone in, goodbye, gone. So definitely, that's, that's one, you may want to, 7933, that's a good one, yeah. Just me, nobody else would like to write Dial by name. Now this, you, again, you got this, if you're 5.2.1 or greater, you've got all these things. Now granted, some of the page are thing big deal, but this is interesting. Now, most people are doing dial by name, and they're using it through their voicemail. And, and most voicemail today is IP connected, you don't really worry about ports so much anymore. But let's pretend for a second you did. You don't worry about hitting that voicemail every time you hit it using port. Um, I can program the CM to uh, ask for, to dial in, it'll go to a, a vector and it'll make an announcement. It'll say dial the first X amount of digits of the last name. You know, the characters, I dial it. If it doesn't find it, it asks you to spell more. And it keeps doing that several times until, and if it, by the way, no match goes to the attendant. But if it finds a match, it'll just connect them up. Kind of like what you were doing in your voicemail. People tend to, that's where they tend to use this. Point is, if you didn't want to, you want to offload it and just use it in the CM where they are anyway, since it answered the call, you can do that. Did you ever? Huh? But you're not speaking in here. You're dialing. You're dialing on the phone. Okay. So, so you, something you could use. Something you could use. Um, this is interesting. If you have contact, particularly contact centers, where we do service observing, using the quality purposes, want to make sure people are saying the right thing and all that. So we'll service observe. Now, um, what will happen here is we will. We have to. In many cases have to put a tone, not just to record, of course, but even to observe. You're listening in on the call. And so what, what this does is I'm listening in on the call. The agent is the only one that does not hear the beep. Everybody else will hear a tone indicating that somebody's on the call. Now, the weird thing about this feature is if I'm the guy the agent's talking to, I'm going to say, what was that beep? You know, so I mean, kind of <laughs> gives it away a little bit. To, you know. <laughs> so maybe we need an SA8570 or something, you know, that does it a different way. I don't know. Uh, one last one here, um, I, I like this one as well. Again, not going to read, it's two slides, uh, but really increasing complexity in the uh, password generation, you know, what you have to use for your system. Uh, it, it tends to be pretty constricted, but now it's really wide open. Um, look at this, maximum, minimum password length to be at least 14. I mean, that's, I forget it. I won't even dial in anything. <laughs> forget I forget it. I can't remember my, you know, my passwords now, but. So again, I wanted this on here, and whoever gets this, whoever downloads it from us, or I'll send it to you if you want me to, you can read through all this. And I hope, by the way, don't forget you can go to support.vire.com. That's what the what special application features. Again, nine pages of that. Uh, please take a look and reference them. If somebody, just read that line and it sounds interesting to you, uh, please reference those by going to support.vire.com. Now, we're going to talk about best practices for home workers. Usually these are agents, um, and my rule number one is don't do this. Not, not the best way. I mean, she got the equipment there and everything, but she's got maybe one kid, you know. So what are we doing with this? First of all, um, president of this of this organization talks about why why people are doing home agents. Customer satisfaction scores are up. Employee satisfaction scores are up and costs are down, which makes sense. I mean, less brick and mortar, it costs are way less when you have somebody working from home than working in the office. People tend to be more, uh, they, they like it. Uh, we'll, talk, we'll talk about that a little bit. There's a great guy, which again, we'll post on the website if you want to get it from us. Um, very nice guy, best practices for home agents that buy it publishes. Really goes into great detail over the, the things that we're going to talk about. <coughs> so, number one, um, you have to establish certain policies, and I, my next slide goes into it more than this, but this is where um, HR gets involved, right, and you have to make sure that when you're going to have people working from home, they adhere to certain policies, and you have to do it to make sure you have the right people, but also that you cover, that you, that you told these people there are certain things that are expected of them. Select the right person for the job. Um, not everybody really is geared to work from home. So always, and this document, by the way, goes into this at length, okay? But um, 
I like the part here, most home agents want access to customer sensitive information. So kind of what you're talking about there is make sure you can trust that person. I'm at home, I'm logged in, I'm getting all this data. You're, maybe if, if, I, if, I, if I was just at home, but not an agent, I wouldn't have access to the same information, customer records and the like. You have to make sure you have a person, they actually say in the document, do background checks. Not everybody's gonna go to that level, but the documentation says, do a background check before you hire somebody to work from home, because you're opening up everything to them. And you know, they, can, they can take it with them, they can make it available someplace else, or use it for some other purpose. Ensure a good working environment. I'll kind of skip through these. I think we pretty much understand. Uh, equip agents to succeed. Very important. This is where company policies. This is where we start to see now a lot of VDI. I don't know if you were in that session uh, with Mark Fletcher earlier. We talked about the WebRTC, uh, right? Or VDI, which is the virtual desktop. Uh, so really important stuff where now I don't even have to. I love that. If I'm, if I'm an IT guy, I love that. I don't have to provision PCs and send them out and worry about all those different things that can happen. I have somebody go to a virtual desktop environment, but you know, more likely than not, we're going to equip them with, with some uh, PCs and things like that. Make experts really available. Now, this is really important. Um, if you're going to have agents working from home, you want to want to have some form of like instant messaging set up, whether it's Skype or somebody else you're using. But keep in mind that person that's working from home can't just stick their head over the cube. You know, can't walk around with the headset on and go and ask the person a question to find the right person again. Can't do it, they're home. So it's a really good practice to make sure you've got some form of instant messaging available to reach out to uh, experts. Because you want first call resolution, right? When you're an agent, you want to be done, right? You don't. Monitor and manage, we talked about service observe, but we also talked about reports. So if somebody's at home working, uh, you want to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, not that they're watching TV, you know, what, what, whatever the case may be. So we want to not only be able to service observe, but it's very important to have those contexts and reports as well. Um, and this is the documentation that talks about, these are really, these are really things that HR would have to go through. Where do you get equipment set up? What, what kind of space do you have to set up in your house? Here's a little checklist kind of thing I put together as well. Okay, so um, how will you handle equipment? Come in the office, you can go out there and set it up for them. How will you handle internet phone service write offs? Kind of nice because in this case, we'll talk about soft phone in a moment. I'd make a very nice bite sized piece that you have to write off. We'll talk about that. Um, a lot of places provide being working from home as a perk for top performers. You could say for the employee of the month, agent of the month, whatever, you can work from home for the next week. And you really be, be uh, surprised. People want that. You can actually hire people for a lower salary based on the fact that they can work from home. And it makes sense. You know, and by the way, I'll show you later on, um, even after hours people or night shift type workers. It's great. So um, I can use my home agents for follow the sun, get people around the country. Um, I'm trying to hit a couple of these that are really important. Identify the best form of telef uh, telephone service and internet bandwidth, really important. And I would always say use a soft phone um, when you're working from home. Anything else? Anybody have at home agents and anything you add to this list? Oh. Oh, no, not so much to add to it. We have lots of home agents. Pardon me? I have nothing to add, but we do have a lot of home agents. You do a lot of at home agents? Yeah. yeah. And are you using like a like one X yeah. agent? Do you make um like is the messaging available to these folks at all? I mean, if you have to reach out to somebody, are they able to do that? Or? Just internally using Lotus Notes at the time. Okay, but they have the capability, which is which is right. nice. Really important. Do you have weather on there? I mean, we can go over this. The weather? Yeah. They can't get into the call center they work from home. Okay, so that is interesting. Thank you. And awesome. So number eight, kind of like that. Um, where is uh, business continuity? Uh, so thank you, Paul, very much. The, the system is up and running, but I can't get to the office. So what it does is also, um, I'm, I'm working from home, it wouldn't matter. But think of it another way, too. So Paul has, one ex agent, people using the agent program while they're at home. Think about the agent that's in the office using one ex agent on a day to day basis. Now, to Paul's point, what would happen here is I come into the office every day. I'm an office worker. I use one ex agent. If I could also use it on a day I can't get in, I'm still, I can still work. I don't, and I'm familiar with that program. I don't have to learn anything brand new. I'm familiar with using that software. Okay, Wild West, this is just about bandwidth. We're talking about bandwidth in a second. So a typical customer calling a typical 
agent, correct? <coughs> so what happens in a call? Right? We know this, right? This call goes everywhere. I'm calling across the street. In this case, I'm actually calling across the street. And it goes, it goes all over. It could literally hit like five or six different locations. You do a ping test on it, you find this latency, and a call is terrible. Now, I will tell you, this is actually important because if I'm in a business where I'm taking magazine subscriptions and I don't hear it quite right, fine. But what if I'm an ambulance service or I'm doing something that's not really a pharmaceutical, but something I have to make sure I get it right? I have to avoid this from happening. This is terrible. That call could sound like the worst cell phone call you ever had. So there's some recommendations on this. First of all, if you can use a common service provider, uh, if everybody, the same one at work, you can ride their backbone, it helps limit some of those, those issues of latency because the trip will more likely than not, not, not go uh, all over the place. Um, now, QoS Mindful. So what QoS Mindful routing would be is this. I'm at home, and so are the kids, who are on whatever they're doing on the internet, and whatever else is happening. Or even if there aren't any kids, I mean, checking email, downloading files, what you can do is you can take, in most cases, your router at home can be programmed to understand the MAC address, the IP address of your phone, your IP phone. And what you do is you, you say that I want to get priority, I want to be QoS mindful of that phone. And your router will say any traffic to or from that IP address or MAC address gets priority over anything else that's taking place. So if somebody's downloading files, listening to music, whatever they're doing on the internet, that phone gets priority. So that's a really important point. Once it hits the internet, you saw what happens. We're not, we can't stop that from happening. But you can take certain steps at both ends of the equation to try and make it better. Another one. Okay, so we talked a little bit about um, telecommuter. So if anybody uses uh, like a soft phone, soft phones are great. Uh, because I can put it in telecommuter mode, which means that I'm dialing with my soft phone, but I'm actually using a phone with a line attached to it. Anybody do that? Also, you got it right. And uh, the reason I like that is, to me, that's the best way to go. First of all, it's the best call quality, right? We're talking across the PSTM. Uh, the other thing is, all calls are actually inbound. Because um, the system's calling me. I call China. It's an inbound call. Um, therefore, it's a fixed monthly cost. Whatever that line is, that's it. I would say, though, make sure, <laughs> make sure you have a dedicated line, OK? I'm not using the home number necessarily if I don't have to. Get a call waiting, anything like that. So, that would be some ways to, to minimize disruption in the world. Okay, just a couple more slides will be done. But I want to mention there's a, a, a session an FBI agent gave uh, with WTA. Um, a fellow from the FBI came in and talked about uh, some other ways to keep uh, things secure at home. Really interesting stuff. Again, this document will be up on the website as well. And here's just some of the topics. I'll just actually open this all right now. Um, and just to tell you real quick, the best, the newer operating systems are more secure. Um, security Suite, Norton, whatever, Semantic, you know, whatever the case may be, make sure that's on there at home. Um, don't make as many people like, give them administrator accounts. Now, sandboxing is very important, really, really important. Um, anybody heard of sandboxing? People know what it is. So it's great, great technology. What sandboxing does, and just to mention this, because you start hearing this more and more, it's very important for organization. I think. What it does is, when you bring a file into your system, now we don't know, it could be, more likely than not, it looks friendly to most systems, to most even orders. It looks like it's, it's a friendly file. What Sandboxing does, it runs the program in a little virtualized portion of your machine. It doesn't affect anything else on the machine. So I bring it in, and I run it. And if it's sandboxed, this program will notice if it's bad. Now, there are bigger programs that, that do a much better job, but you can actually get that in some browsers and also with a PDF reader. Really good, right? If it does some bad, you identify it right there before it has a chance to get into your machine and infect your machine. Very important. Uh, full disk encryption is very good to do as well. Uh, download software only from trusted sources. I think we tend to do that, right? I mean, we're all kind of wary about things. And uh, we want to secure our, our mobile devices. Now, last, last thing here. Um, network recommendations as well. We want to have a firewall on there. Uh, it, you know, very important. Password protection, very important as well. And by the way, but configure a flexible home network. What that really refers to is the service provider when you get your DSL or whatever, they'll give you a router. Actually, the recommendation is you put another one in your home besides that, on top of it. And you can, you can manipulate that. You really can't manipulate the router you get from the other provider. 
That's pretty much it, I think. Um, okay, in that document, someone wrote about this right now, it's got one document from the FBI, at the very end, it's got all these sources. Really, really cool. I like the email attachment part, too. Very important to do that. And maybe disseminate this within your organization. You find some of these tips about how to be careful. It doesn't even matter if you're an at-home worker. People in the office uh, need to know this as well. And I think we're done. So I hope you guys got good things out of this session and some good information. Um, we'll get you know, then, uh, as far as the address to go to, we'll have to get the, our web address out there to everybody, so we'll do that. And uh, come to our website and download all this information if you like. So thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you.